Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGig webinar series. Today, the topic is on cloud certifications for success in the changing landscape. And uh, it's a pleasure to say that we have with us uh, Corian Bast, who is the product manager, Emerging Technologies, ITpreneurs, Netherlands, VV. Corian is a global product manager at ITpreneurs, a leading content provider for IT best practices training and workshops. His responsibilities include overseeing the development and maintenance of ITpreneurs' growing portfolio of cloud product offerings. He works closely with experts and organizations that drive industry accepted common and best practices such as CompTIA, IASACA and ISO. In addition, he collaborates with industry professionals to publish articles and deliver presentations on cloud computing trends. We, uh, we are going to have a very interesting session today and uh, Corian wants to make the session as interactive as possible. So throughout the session, we are going to have a couple of poll questions and uh, the moment I launch the poll questions, uh, here's a request for all the attendees to uh, give your response um, as and when and we will be taking in questions during the last 15 or 20 minutes of today's session. So without any further delay, I hand over the session to Corian. Corian, over to you. Thank you, Shreyakla. And um, thanks everybody for joining this webinar. And um, like Shreyakla said, uh, we're going to make it an interactive session and we'll probably take about 30, between 35 and 45 minutes on the session itself and then we'll um, then we'll hand it over to uh, to you guys for questions and answers and today we're going to talk about cloud certifications uh, for basically your personal success but also organizational success and I think the um, what I would like you to take away from this webinar is basically that cloud is coming whether you like it or not um, using it is very easy but actually using it to your benefit and to your organization's benefit is a lot harder and uh, I think there's a lot of good certifications out there in the marketplace that can help you do that and that can help organizations and I think that's the that that's key in, in delivering my story today for you. Um, Shriok, now could you pull up the poll and see if people can hear me okay and also to see if um, yeah, people are engaged already. So sure, launch I launched the first the poll, first poll. sure. Or not. And then you can kind of see how it works. It's pretty basic just uh, clicking on and in the meantime I'll quickly go over to the next slide um, just a little bit about myself but um, that will be very short so like Sri um, Lakna said I'm the product manager at ITpreneurs we develop training products and courseware and um, so I have a great job where I can work with experts um, look out what kind of trends there are in the marketplace and develop training and certifications um, for those, let's say, interesting market areas, and, and cloud is definitely one that's um, that's very important for us today. Do you get any responses in yet? Yes, ninety-seven percent uh, they say oh, yes, okay. and three percent uh, no. no. So we can so we can take it as a yes. So the three percent would they would probably have to either dial in or uh, turn up their volume a little bit. So right, right. We'll continue with uh, with the regular slides then. So I'm closing this poll now, and we wait okay. for uh, the further prompts. Yeah, great. So the attendees can see the screen again? Yes, they can. OK, perfect. Um, thank you for that. So quickly, the agenda. So we'll look at the cloud readiness um, in brackets or lack thereof, because I think there's a lot of organizations that are not very much ready. Then we'll look at some, say, training and certification and the role of that. Um, also, the developing cloud certification landscape. So, um, what can we learn from that? Then, quickly on the Cloud Credential Council, the organization that basically provides certifications um, for organizations and individuals to actually yeah, enable them to use cloud computing. And then, quickly on some cloud certification tracks. So first up is the cloud readiness or lack thereof and um, this might be you or this might be some organizations um, and I hear it all the time. They say, yeah, I've heard too much about cloud uh, or I don't really know what it is or yeah, it's not really for me and uh, I'm not really interested in it but 
Um, I really hope this is not you, because if you look at some of the statistics, um, it shows that 80% of, uh, of large organizations uh, will use the cloud in uh, in within two years, and um, yeah, that's obviously you know sent by Gartner, um, and every every year that they publish information, um, it's just evident that cloud will impact um, you whether you like it or not. Um, and so, is the organization ready? I think what we see is that, um, like I said in the beginning of the webinar, um, using cloud, and even for organizations, using cloud is very, very easy. Um, but really using it to your benefit, that's, that's a lot more difficult, and really controlling it is a lot more difficult. The organizations are using Dropbox, they use some online SaaS solutions, like software as a service, um, and buying it and purchasing it is, is very easy. But then, really using it properly, um, that's a lot harder, and I think if you if you look at certifications and what they could provide and what they teach you, I think it's something that's very valuable to both you as an individual and your value that you can provide to an organization, as well as an organization that that it will now be more confident and better equipped to actually use cloud computing and all of the technologies that that are offered today, and also making sure that you're taking the right decisions. So some considerations, um, PPT, people, process, and technology, and that doesn't stand for PowerPoint. Um, so for example, you know, if you look at people, there's an impact of cloud on you, um, and what is that impact? Do you know how cloud will impact you today, um, or how cloud impacts you uh, perhaps you know, in a later stage? But also, are you ready for cloud? Are organizations ready? Uh, what type of skill gap is there? What does exist now, and what kind of skills gap does exist in a couple of years? And I'll get to that in a couple in the next slides. Um, Shirak, now could you open up the the poll whether um, people are impacted by the cloud yet? Sure, so I will do that. that. I think that's that last poll. Yeah. Yes. So I would like to to hear from you here on um, the attendees on the webinar. Have you seen an impact yet of cloud computing on your specific role? Or on your organization, so they're voting. Uh, have you seen an impact yet? Okay. Yeah. So I'll stop talking for a second, and I'll let you um, answer the question. Sure. Interesting answer coming up. Let's give it maybe thirty odd seconds, and then we can close it. Okay. I'm personally pretty curious to see the results as well. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we can uh, we can read out the answers now. So 37% okay. say yes somewhat, 33% yes a lot, 24% not yet but will be, and only 7% no. Okay. Yeah, well, that's actually, thanks for sharing that, uh, Sri Lak. Now I'm, I'm actually happy that we have then almost, let's say, more, uh, at least more than two-thirds of people that say, yes, I am impacted by the cloud, and right. um, let's say a third that is very impacted. If, if the, the, and the 7% that's not impacted, I mean, that's fine too, and, and I'm glad actually you joined as well to just learn about this, because you've probably heard about it. Um, but if, let's say, a lot of people were not impacted yet, then I would probably be out of the job. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the results, <laughs> and, uh, and sure. hopefully have some, you know, we can share something. Um, valuable today during the webinar, and this uh, and this is a slide that I put together for let's say a mapping organizational roles and 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 how they are impacted by cloud computing, and what I'll pull up now. Uh, and then, by the way, Shilak, I assume that the poll is now closed. Um, yes, the that, poll is um, closed. Okay, thank you. And that the you know I'm not asking you to read all of these names. Um, for example, I just put all of the roles that a typical organization has. So um, the IT specialist, that's typically, a, let's say, a large role within an organization. And then you have process specialist and security specialist. And again, don't try to read all of the roles, but these are just an example of, uh, of some roles within an organization. Then we have technical services, um, like infrastructure guys, computer operators, coordinators. Um, those roles typically exist as well. We have project managers that do all kinds of stuff. We have vendor management skills, uh, architects, and so on. And these are typically what you see within an IT organization, the roles that, that 
basically exist. If you then say, well, um, let's say that we are going to use cloud computing. Um, how are these roles impacted? And a lot of the organizations and also people that work at these organizations don't know. So for example, um, let's say somebody wants to create a private cloud solution. Um, and all the roles that you see in orange are impacted by cloud. So an application architect, but an, a service coordinator, they all need to know something um, about cloud computing because the technologies that are used are, are slightly different. Um, and some, sometimes the, the changes will be minimal, but sometimes they will be greater. And it's important that you know uh, that if you keep going to create a private cloud, then which roles of the organization are impacted and how are you managing that skill gap. Um, another example is, for example, if you put all the business critical applications on an enterprise cloud, so not internal but external, then it might even be possible that a lot of the roles here in red, and I mean, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more dramatic, but because perhaps it's not entirely correct, but it's at least a good slide to, to get you thinking, like which roles will no longer be available, or um, are these roles going to be outsourced to somewhere? And I think that's, um, it's important to understand kind of like this image and trying to be ahead of, um, of that change that might be coming. And then here's another example. And, you could basically just use the sheet and map out if I do this, which roles will be impacted and what am I doing um, to get those, those roles either transferred into other roles or organizations or organizational skills. So um, I think it's, a, it's an, interesting, an interesting exercise to, to map this out perhaps to your organization. Um, if you look at the, the jobs, also cloud-related, because it's not all bad news. Um, the previous slides were like, wow, but do I lose my job? Well, not really, because if you look at the, the posted job skills, that, uh, sorry, the jobs that require cloud skills, uh, that has increased between 2010 and 2012 with 400 percent. And I regularly look at the, the stats of, um, of jobs, and then it, you can just immediately see that the, the number of yeah, jobs that are opening requiring cloud skills is, uh, is significantly uh, increasing. And, uh, and like I said, many jobs will be touched by cloud. So right now, like if you're a supply chain manager, um, yeah, you, you probably are required to know a little bit about the cloud. And if you're in finance, then yes, financial models of how clouds are used and, and the payment models behind it, um, those are impacted too. So if you're a finance manager, yes, it would be, it would make sense to actually have some skills on cloud computing or at least know um, what it means to your organization so you can actually have a discussion, for example, with the CIO or with the IT guys. And uh, so that's why I really think it's important that um, yeah, everybody that is somewhat impacted maybe gets a certificate or does a training or somehow show that you, uh, that you understand the impact of cloud to you and your organization. And there's also more good news because um, a lot of the the jobs are with four cloud skills are unf unfilled. So um, here on the screen, you see the blue line, and um, you can see that the the top the top there are cloud related jobs, and that's basically just increasing over time. And uh, we expect that over the years to come, that, that will only increase more and more as part of the, the non cloud jobs. So um, yeah, I think and I think that's good news because it also it creates a lot of opportunities. I, th I think also uh, India has a lot of opportunity to actually become yeah, a country that does a lot of the cloud services or provide those to other organizations. And um, so yeah, I think it's a good thing that um, um, that, we, that we actually see cloud coming and cloud changing the, uh, the IT landscape. From that landscape, we go into the cloud certification landscape. So um, I already touched on it a little bit, like you know, does certification have a role? I think so. I think it's very important. Um, so what does it mean to you to certify yourself? Um, well, personally, I believe that if you take certifications, your, sk your skills are current. Um, it shows that you take initiative and uh, you want to be at the forefront instead of, you know, leading the pack instead of, um, yeah, just following and trailing behind. It can also differentiate you from peers. Like I had a neighbor who was a IT specialist or a maintenance specialist at, uh, at Dell. He said, yeah, I just really want to learn more so um, yeah, I can differentiate from my other peers and, and, and continue to have my job and maybe even grow to another role. Um, I think it also provides assurance to management that um, 
yeah, it validates the skills and they can yeah, they can basically build on your skills and build on you. And therefore it keeps you valuable and marketable even when perhaps an economy doesn't go so well. Um, and I think last one, personal certification and recognition. Um, I recently took a Kepner Trago course about problem solving. I really liked it and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to just you know, learn more skills and, and uh, improve yourself. And that's um, in a nutshell I think why certification on a personal basis um, could be very important. But it's not just the let's say personal side that's, uh, that can benefit from certifications, also an organization. So if an organization says, yeah, you should you know, take a training, how does that help them? Well, it helps them to build in-house cl cloud competencies. So I think it's important if yeah, an organization has people uh, available that can actually do the work instead of having to rely on external consultants. And, uh, and not, not only that, but also if you know things about the cloud, it helps with cloud adoption. Uh, if people are let's say don't know much about the cloud, they, they can be fearful, they can say, well, I don't really know what it is, so I don't want to change, I'm happy where I am now. And if people know why to go with cloud computing, then um, that helps the adoption. Um, the third bullet from the top is uh, make the right cloud decisions. So somewhat related to the first bullet, the in-house cl cloud competencies. Um, if people have the right skills and an organization has people they can rely on, they'll make better cloud decisions. So um, yeah, you get money saved and therefore the fourth bullet down you get more out of cloud investments so yeah, you just spend your money better um, fifth bullet down high cloud project success rate so yeah, you're just more successful with uh, with cloud and I think all of these factors also come down to raise the management confidence level so if things are going well if you have the skills and if you use cloud technology for the right reasons and for the right types of um, let's say organ uh, business lines then yes it's a uh, it's a very it's very good for also for management to actually uh, do this before we go to the next slide maybe you can uh, pull up the another poll uh, Sri Lakna on uh, personal uh, you know if they have been certified already sure I will just pull it up now okay Right. Let's see if people st are still listening. <laughs> yeah. They are. Oh, right, that's already good news. Do you also uh, plan to give any demo, uh, Korean, during your presentation today, or? Um, a demo I wasn't planning on, but I can certainly do something. What are you thinking of? Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, we have uh, this question. So somebody, uh, somebody is asking, he says, can you please display scenario one slide again? So if it's not too irrelevant now, if you could quickly go back after the poll answers come in yeah. to scenario one sure. slide. Okay, so I'll mm -hmm. close the poll now and the answers are somewhat like this. 53% says I hold one or more IT certifications today. 34% I have earned IT certifications in the past and 13% say I do not have any personal need for certification. Okay, well, good results, yeah. So a lot of people have experience with, uh, with certification in that sense. Right. Great. Um, because the next slide was going to be on, let's say, what certifications are out there for you that could be interesting. Um, but you wanted me to go back to the scenario one slide, is that correct? This one. Are you still there? This is scenario one slide. So. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe we could pause for a couple of seconds and uh, if you want to touch upon any quick pointers, you could do that as well. And then you can move on with the rest of the presentation. Okay, yeah, and I mean, like I said, the it's not like these scenarios are 100% uh, accurate. I did basically go 
would you know, have some subject matter expert on this look at it as well. And in the grand scheme of things, yes, it's it's somewhat correct, but it's more designed to just be a talking point. So if um, and you could just do this for all kinds of um, assignments. But if you create a on-premise cloud solution, then various roles within the organization will have uh, an impact, and they will need to know things about cloud. Um, they will maybe lead some projects or just take part in project teams, and um, and the roles here in orange are the ones that um, that are impacted if you decide to create an on-premise cloud solution. So it's really just designed to map out which roles do you think will be impacted uh, when you do something within your organization. So you could do something um, similar for other cloud projects if you say, well, I'm going to use Dropbox for storage, then well, um, you know, which roles are impacted? Or if you say, uh, in the other scenario, if you build something else, which roles again are impacted and then yeah, you can start thinking about well if these roles are impacted what am I doing am I training these people am I ensuring that we maybe get somebody from external in to actually fulfill this role if we don't have it um, do we need some help there uh, for example if you say yeah, network specialist in the technical services roles um, if you don't really have a lot of expertise then yeah, perhaps you should outsource that and, or get somebody uh, to help you do that uh, or again, uh, train people so they have the skills to actually support it. So that's in a nutshell how, how this slide is used and how um, this mapping can be done. So it's not that these are all of the, for example, in project management there's nobody in orange, but you could say, yeah, but somebody needs to be involved there too. Um, so, it's, so it's not that this is 100% you know, representation of a specific organization and this is always how it is, no, but it, it does show some, yeah, some uh, information that gets you thinking and to actually use this template yourself. Thank I you hope so that much. Answers the question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So again, really just a tool that you can use. So after um, this one, so basically I just was discussing why you could certify yourself, what are the advantages there, also um, why organizations should bother with uh, certifying their their people. So <laughs> if you want. Um, to convince your boss and say, hey, I want to go on a training, and can you pay for it? Then you can use this slide and say, look, um, I just attended a webinar, and they really say it's powerful to, to get people trained and to have internal cloud competencies. So you can use this slide. Um, on the next slide, there's just a the landscape of some of, of the most neutral uh, cloud certificates. So uh, I work for ITpreneurs, and the only thing we do is, uh, or at least mostly, is provide vendor neutral certifications. Uh, so certifications for um, standard bodies like TOGAF from the Open Group, or COBIT from ISACA, or um, yeah, Cloud Essentials from the Cloud Credential Council. And that's um, why we partnered with the Cloud Credential Council, the CCC, as you can see somewhere towards the bottom, is um, yeah, that we want to provide vendor neutral training, uh, and they provide the syllabus, and um, and when basically I'll go to I'll get to this, the history of the CCC just in a little bit, but if you look at their programs, they are vendor neutral, and they are complementary to let's say vendor related training. So if you have a VMware basic training already, then I think the professional courses from the CCC are very relevant. Um, they also get input across industry, so it's not just that the cloud um, industry or cloud vendors are providing input into the certificates. For example, Microsoft. Um, for example, also Deloitte provides input into uh, the CCC, so it's not just that it's coming from one from one area. I think it's also multidisciplinary because the CCC offers courses and certificates from, let's say, the, for the security guys, but also governance, uh, for service managers and architects, uh, but also um, if you're in sales or, or account management, I think the Cloud Technology Associate certificate is uh, is very relevant for that. Um, last one is global. They're also global, so that's something that uh, that is important for us because we provide training globally. Um, the only thing they don't have yet as much is the brand recognition, um, because for example, if you go to VMware or you go to CompTIA, that brand is generally stronger than from the Cloud Credential Council. So I think that's something that they that they still have to work with. Um, however, if you're saying, well, I'm I'm really let's say dedicated towards technology and I'm dedicated to VMware. Then VMware could be very relevant to just take VMware training, 
but I think a vendor neutral perspective to um, for example VMware training can be very relevant so um, that's why I think in courses from the CCC are very are very relevant because they complement let's say technologies for example if you have only certified yourself on VMware it could help to let's say take a more neutral course and think about maybe there are other technologies that are also relevant but not offered by say some of the vendors so that's why I think it's it's very very relevant to do a vendor neutral course I could come back in, in, in to the to the sheet if there's um, if there's any questions on that but here's basically just a quick slide we put together on the landscape of certifications um, again there's discipline specific so for example on the bottom right there's the CCSK uh, perhaps you're familiar with that that's the um, um, the cloud sorry certification offered by the cloud security alliance and um, again that's really discipline specific because it's really just for security professionals um, it's vendor neutral because it's offered by the cloud security alliance um, so that's why that one is on the on the right side and um, then for example VMware training usually that's discipline specific as well uh, same with Microsoft where you can get certified on a specific technology stack um, then then uh, and on the bottom right obviously there's the courses that we provide um, with the Cloud Credential Council as well as with CompTIA uh, because those are vendor neutral and we have multiple different courses for um, um, for people to take so a little bit of history if you're thinking well who is the Cloud Credential Council well in 2010 um, I was working I was involved with that project actually ING wanted a to consolidate data centers from let's say 16 to 3 um, they want to adopt cloud and they realized that training was definitely needed to get people there um, but no vendor neutral program was really available and fit so what has happened is that, um, that the CCC was created by um, let's say a lot of organizations and entrepreneurs was also involved to provide expertise um, so basically cloud experts came together that worked for VMware, Cisco, IBM and HP and they all contributed to let's say the development of the syllabus what became the cloud technology associate and that's the program we now offer and that's kind of an introductory program for people to take um, so out of that again the, the CCC associate cloud technology certificate and that's a combination of the CompTIA cloud essentials course as well as the virtualization essentials course offered by the CCC so if you get both certificates then you get the CCC associate title um, so that was created about 2011 um, when we launched that. That was and that's something we yeah we've we've gotten a lot of feedback on and a lot of people are happy. Um, and what we see is that different people take that course. For example, there's um, account managers at technology companies that take it, but there's also finance managers, for example, that take a CompTIA Cloud Essentials class. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting to see that that's a very diverse group of people taking that introductory training. Um, but now we said, well, uh, we would also like to see if we have, uh, if we can tailor more professional training. And the CCC looked at that and worked together with various organizations, as you can see here on the slide, to get new syllabi developed for a professional level course. So right now we have, uh, or let's see, we entrepreneurs are building courses for some of them, uh, while some of the syllab syllabi, are, all the syllabi are available, but we are not able to uh, develop syllabi or courseware materials for all of them at the same time. So right now we we have available solution architect and service manager. Um, and I'm very happy with the syllabi that the CCC provided. So um, we can now also start to offer professional training. So that's kind of like the history of of where the CCC came from, and um, yeah, I think they're doing a lot of good work. Um, I kind of touched on the mission a little bit as well. So what the CCC tries to do and have a look at cloudcredential.org um, but they basically provide um, say syllabi and tools for organizations and professionals to certify themselves and uh, provide organizational guidance and some tools and certification and training and uh, for example at Cloud Expo Asia there's a, a training happening in November so um, yeah they provide they try to basically educate the market um, for cloud adoption I'll take a little break here and see if there's any questions yet. Um, yes, uh, there there are a couple here, of questions. Oh, no. go ahead, uh, Shilakna. 
No, no, no. I I was just saying yeah, that yes. For a couple of, yep. Right. I'm just sending you a couple of more questions. You can take them up. Okay. Which is the best cloud you prefer, private or public, and which is more secure comparatively? Um, that's an that's an interesting question. I think in 2010, um, when when we started, let's say, building some course materials for this, um, we were somewhat hesitant with the security. We said, well, let's say, if you work in a government organization or um, let's say the military, then maybe cloud is not very much appropriate because it's not as secure as building it yourself. Uh, however, in the last two years, uh, three years, almost three years, I should say, uh, the security I think has has, in, has improved significantly. Um, also, the United States government they said basically cloud first, so they they are even using cloud computing. And um, um, for example, I believe uh, a contract was provided for let's say the intelligence security. And um, so yes, I I think it really depends what you want and uh, and what you what you want to do, but. Security, I don't think it is no longer is an issue um, what is better. So it really depends on also, say, costing. What costs more money? What is better? Um, and yeah, what are your priorities? So it's very difficult to say whether you want to go private uh, or public. I think public is a lot easier if you don't have to build anything yourself. If you just use, let's say, a software as a service tool as opposed to building it yourself. So that could be, so I would say public. Um, as opposed to private, because there's, it's usually more difficult to do it uh, to do it in house. But again, it really depends. Um, then Hill, I hope I pronounced your name right. Are there any certifications for free or any scholarships available? Because as a student, you know, it, it's difficult to pay the high fees. I can definitely understand that. Um, I know that, for example, RackSpace. If you go to RackSpace, to, to RackSpace Cloud U, they actually have a free. Um, course available. It's um, it's pretty good for um, if you just want to get an understanding of cloud computing. So then I would, if you want, if you're looking at free, then I would recommend the uh, Cloud U from Rackspace. Um, I will do one more question and then I'll move on. So which trainer provides uh, CC training courses in India? If you the answer to that question is if you go to cloudcredential.org, there's a public course calendar. And uh, you can see which organizations are currently offering that, or you can just send them an email and say, "Hey, um, where are you? Where are your trainers located, or organizations that provide training?" Because not all organizations publish the training dates on the uh, on the calendar. But I know for a fact that we have provided training in India, so uh, it's definitely there. Mm -hmm. We'll move on for now, and I'll get I'll come back to the questions just in a little bit. Yes, uh, we have. Because I don't have that many slides more left. I think. Yeah. Right. A lot of questions are pouring in, so you can. A lot of questions are pouring in, so you can you can take them uh, probably in about uh, ten minutes. Okay. And I'll do my best to answer all of them. Then <laughs> I hope we won't run out of time. I'm sure. But um, so just a couple slides left, and then we'll get to the questions and answers section. So we're about 35 minutes in. I think about 10 minutes more, and then uh, we'll end the end the slide deck. Um, so, personally, I think that for basically to 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 excel in the cloud domain, cloud market, it's important to have the say the combination of vendor neutral cloud understanding, and whether you get that through reading or uh, doing multiple courses at multiple let's say providers, or however you want to do it, but make sure that you. Um, you, you not only basically become an expert on let's say one technology uh, provider, but uh, but also try to understand multiple ones. Uh, and the I mean easiest way, obviously, and uh, that's something that we would promote because we're a training provider, is to provide uh, vendor neutral cloud training and do some best practice technology training. Uh, and those combined, I think, are very powerful because then you can assess whether. Uh, technology provider A is better than provider B in a certain situation, or perhaps provider C has a different solution that in your situation uh, is better. So it, it really all depends on, on what you want and what you need. And, um, and I think having, let's say, a vendor neutral background to assess all of the vendors is uh, yeah, something that's important. So, what a, so a typical roadmap, and this is just an example. Perhaps you could start with CompTIA Cloud Essentials, say, yeah, I'm going to take that training. 
Um, after that, I take a v v uh, VCC virtualization essentials course. Um, then if I have an understanding of cloud, then I'm going to specialize in, for example, uh, a technology provider, uh, whether that's um, Microsoft or VMware or uh, EMC, it really doesn't matter. It really depends on uh, yeah, what you need in to be successful. Um, and after I've perhaps specialized on some vendors, uh, I take a service manager course again with the CCC to supplement the um, that to supplement the vendor neutral perspective and put that uh, put into your bucket of skills. So that and that's just an example. There's many more. And also, if you go to our website itpreneurs.com, on the bottom you can actually find various roadmaps for um, for training. So whether you're an IT architect, which courses are available to you and um, and even non-cloud courses could be relevant depending on your role. Um, again, I kind of touched on these already. So what we currently offer, let's see, with the CCC is the associate level, what you can see here on the bottom, which is the combination of the CompTIA Cloud Essentials as well as the CCC Virtualization Essentials course. Um, if you get those both, you get the associate level degree. Um, and then we are currently offering the Service Manager course, uh, the Architect course, and also coming up with the other ones. So that's, um, um, these courses are offered globally. And um, again, you can look at the, uh, the, the course calendar to see where they run. Uh, some of them are, are, just, are just released and are very new. So it might take, let's say, a month or two before the calendar fills up. But um, yeah, you can always just ask the CCC when they're running courses where if they're not on the calendar yet. So quickly on that CCC associate, I mentioned it a couple times already. Um, the target audience is really like business and IT roles aiming to get a broad understanding of cloud computing. So the CCC associate um, includes, let's say, virtualization technology and cloud technology. But that's just one um, area of the course. For example, we also look at the, the risks of, this, of virtualization in cloud, but also how do you adopt those technologies? What things do you have to think about when you actually implement it within your organization. Um, also, what are the impact on the services? So um, service management is very important as well with, um, with cloud computing and virtualization. So what's the impact of that as well? Uh, what are the business advantages? So why would you even consider cloud computing? Um, what's the business case for that? So the associate level degree is really not just, you know, it's not technology focused. Uh, I think technology is only maybe 40 or 30 percent of the whole certificate. So it's much more for, for, for just a, a general understanding of cloud computing. Um, if you're a little bit more advanced, then um, I'll just skip this one, is then again the professional series. So those are, uh, there's various roles, so this one is the solutions architect. And I sat through this course a couple of weeks ago here in Rotterdam, uh, where I'm based. And um, what was very interesting to see is that we had uh, say enterprise architects and business architects, but um, yeah, cloud is is really a disruptor in that sense, and um, it's really incredible to see the impact cloud can have on let's say architecting um, the the IT landscape for an organization. And what was very relevant is that after this training, uh, the business architects as well as the enterprise architect really thought differently about you know, what can they do with cloud, what did they have to think about, what reference or architecture models are available or um, could you utilize? So it's very powerful to basically add that, let's say, that cloud knowledge within uh, the brains of the uh, of the attendees. And th the same really goes for uh, the service manager course, which we also run recently. Um, and actually, I see a typo here, cloud security governance. So that should have been cloud service manager. Um, and again, it's if you're a service manager or you're, uh, you're, you're working in that field, um, then you'll soon have to design cloud services and manage those and, and launch them. And how do you do that? And how is it different from yeah, just doing it your doing your regular service management job? And that's really what the course provides, so that you can be ready for um, for what lies ahead. So, a quick recap then from this presentation. Um, I, I don't think cloud is no longer a buzz. Uh, some people say, yeah, you know, uh, I don't think cloud is, is real yet. Well, uh, if you look at the statistics, it's, it's definitely past the hype and it's real, so it's coming. Um, what we also have seen is that cloud competencies don't really exist within organizations. So like I said, a lot of the organizations um, can easily buy and purchase cloud solutions, but leveraging them 
really to their benefit and, and managing them well is a lot more difficult. I mean, anybody, anybody with a credit card can go out and, and, and use cloud computing, but, uh, but thinking about how you're going to use it and embedding it within, within your organization is, uh, is a lot harder. And what we also saw is the cloud impacts uh, various roles within an organization. So have a look at that sheet again and think, well, if we're going to, if we're going to the cloud, what will my role there be? Um, and, uh, and what do I need to do or what do others need to do? Certifications are the surest form, let's say, of recognition and assurance. So if you have certifications, I think it's something that you can, that you can actually prove that you, uh, that you took the training, that you invest in yourself and it proves that you have cloud skills that are, again, getting more and more relevant. And the, uh, again, also what I mentioned, just learning about products and vendor training, um, that's great, but I think it's even better if, um, if you have more vendor neutral courses to supplement your, let's say, your vendor, your vendor knowledge. And then uh, the last one is, yeah, look for the accredited courses and, um, and see if you're interested in, in taking one of these. So, that's a quick recap, then I have one bonus before we go to the, the questions. Um, a while ago we developed a, a game, like a simulation, where you can kind of like test the, what do I know about cloud computing or is there much more for me to learn. And it's basically, if you're familiar with SimCity, don't know if some of you play that game, or um, just other simulation type games, um, this is one of them and you can play the first two levels for free if you sign up for um, for the game, and uh, then you basically just have to manage a company and uh, and play around with cloud solutions. So it's quite a funny game. So again, cloudchallenge.com will will get you there, and you can play it for free. Um, quickly, where are related courses available? Um, there's a link here. If you go to cloudcredential.org, you'll see the uh, the upcoming courses. If you click at the upcoming courses tab, you cannot find it. You can just basically just add upcoming course. Um, and then finally, if you have any questions or uh, you want to really receive some more information on certain things, then just send an email to india at itpreneurs.com. In the subject line, just put in CJ's webinar and then just fire away. Um, look forward to receiving your questions, comments, or feedback, or whatever it is that we can help you with. With that, uh, Sri Lagna, I think we've come to the end of this presentation. So um, with 15 minutes to go for questions and answers, I think we should be good to go. So, um, what should we do? Should we look at the questions right now? Uh, sure. Um, first, first, I wanted to check with you. Would you want them to take the last poll question, or uh, we are we are all set with um, the questions? I think. Yep. Yeah, sure. We could, why not? There's one more poll questions, and then in the, if they if they answer that poll question in the meantime, I will already start looking the question looking at the questions. Would that work? Sure. I will launch the last poll question then. Okay. And then I'll skip through the questions that you forwarded to me. A lot of people, uh, they're asking about the course fees and the kind of certifications and the courses they, they can find here in India. So. Um, Maybe if you could uh, quickly give a recap on that once again uh, before um, you start um, off with the questions. Uh, which one do you mean, sorry? Uh, in general, there are a couple of questions which I haven't yet assigned. So um, okay. they're asking about the course fees and you know the certifications uh, that they can find in India. A um, couple of them I have assigned to you, so probably I think uh, that's that's the understanding people people are more inclined to understand uh, the kind of certificate courses uh, they can uh, get enrolled into here in India mm, okay I understand I think pricing varies per um, per country so I, I at the top of my head I don't know the pricing for India um, you could you could Google on let's say the CompTIA Cloud Essentials exam as well as looking at the CCC program. I don't exactly know what they charge now for the exams. Um, and the training itself is, is provided by courseware providers. So and so they set the price for the courses. So also that I uh, I cannot help you with. I think it's easiest to basically Google the course name um, 
and then uh, and see what the courses um, are charged for. Okay, I, I I'm I'm pretty sure that's uh, at least helpful. They can uh, start start it off, and if there is any other question, they can always touch base with you. So we have the poll answers with okay. us. So seventy four percent say yourself, eighteen yes. percent your team or organization, three percent looking for qualified candidates, and five percent opportunity for for your training or certification. Okay. So the, so the largest, and thank you for that, Sri Lanka. So the, the largest group yeah. is, let's say, training for yourself. And yeah, right. I think, um, I mean, it will, it will be difficult to answer the question saying, well, what should you do? Um, because I don't have that answer. I think if, if I were you, I would basically look at what is currently my role within the organization um, and try to see what kind of skills am I lacking or what do you really love to do? Um, and combine those and say, well, what, what what type of certifications are out there? Perhaps, you know, just Google um, the type of skills that you that you require. Look at um, some of the, the courses and really look at the learning objectives of a course, and see if you can yeah, find the course that supplements what um, what you need. I think that's what uh, that's what I would do personally. Just really so think about what is your role right now, where is your role going to. And, uh, and then trying to fi figure out which which cloud skills or which skills do you currently not have, and which course provides those. So that's um, uh, again Quick. that's that's very personal question. Yeah. Right. Quickly, uh, in fact, uh, you you guys can go onto techgeek.com and uh, check the e-learning courses uh, which are available currently. And uh, as Korean mentioned before, you can also log on to IT Pruners and check their global course calendar. Uh, so this probably will be a bit more useful. And you're right. And is there a de is there a demo available on TechGig as well? Uh, I'm sure there is. Uh, in fact, um, those who are interested to find out more information, they can always take it up with us offline, and uh, we'll be more than okay. happy to help them. Okay, great. Yeah. And the um, that's a that's a good one. I think that you're offering the Cloud Essentials courses, e-learning. Right. Um, so that's an excellent that's an excellent course to get a <clears throat> let's say a broad understanding of cloud computing if if you're not so advanced yet. Um, I'm seeing here a course. Is there, are these certifications helpful for software testing? I think this, the courses for that are currently offered by the CCC um, that's not typically geared towards software testers. Um, so no, for software testing. Um, I don't think these are the best courses to take. I'm looking at another one. <clears throat> Here's a question from a gentleman that says, um, I don't have an IT background, but I'm working on uh, VBA in Excel and want to groom myself in cloud computing. Um, what are the certification needed for this, and uh, where can I pursue these courses? I think the um, cloud Cloud Computing Essentials is, is where I would start. So again, and it's um, what uh, Sri Lagna said, the course that, that it currently is available. I think that's a good way to start with, um, to start with, to get a, basically, if you don't have an IT background, to just get a, a good understanding of what cloud computing is, and from there move forward to, uh, to say, other specific certificates. Again, I uh, get a question here, is the training and certification location specific? Um, no, it's not. So anywhere in, the, anywhere in the world that course is provided, for example, um, yeah, basically in every country you can take a course. There's different various providers that offer courses from, for example, VMware that offers the Cloud Essentials course to a small training company in Australia. Um, another question here, how can CloudBend be secured when all our data is on the server? What kind of security measures are being taken? And that's a good question to ask uh, if you outsource or if you use cloud computing. And it really, again, it also depends if you're working for, let's say, a small company, then maybe it's, uh, and you don't have expertise to sec secure your personal servers uh, yourself, then it might be better to go with a cloud provider because their cloud security measures um, can be a lot, you know, stricter than the ones that you have developed yourself. However, if you're an expert in, in security, then um, then yeah, it might be wise to just keep your uh, keep keep the files within your own organization and don't go to the cloud. So again, it really depends on how good you are yourself. And but again, it's an excellent question to ask or to review 
if you're um, if you're looking at say using cloud solutions to really figure out what you know what is the security level of this solution and is this security level of, of another solution uh, is that is that better than this one and again for example if you would take a security course uh, it would help you with um, with that to really assess wh which one is more secure uh, provider A or provider B just looking at some other questions here um, somebody asked for a book including a CD. I don't actually know um, if we're offering a book. I know that McGraw Hill probably if you if you go on Amazon and you you Google Cloud Essentials, um, there is a book including a CD coming out, I believe, in December based on uh, the CompTIA Cloud Essentials course. Corin, I have assigned some of the questions. You will find them in the questions uh, window. Okay. Yeah. And I see a question here, thinking out loud, how does a certification like cloud security specialist help someone? Will they be of help in their existing company or at a cloud provider? And I think the answer to are they, is it only for the existing company or a cloud provider? I think it's both. And that we actually got that question when we're doing the cloud solution architect course saying, well, is this course for, let's say, the provider side? or the consumer side and uh, I think it has a little bit of both and it's um, yeah I think it really the course really helps to uh, in, in case the security course uh, to just really assess that the various cloud technologies from it, it, it provides a neutral perspective and if you go to itpreneurs.com uh, slash cloud you can basically look at the um, the individual course sheets also by the way if you actually I could show you that but if you go to cloudcredential.org um, you can look at the information provided per course, per certification, and you can kind of see what is this course about. So um, you know, without going into too much detail, I would you know, start with that and have a look. Mm. And I see here, um, I'm a VCP, MCTS, ITIL, and PM. I assume that's project management. I have good cloud imp implementation experience with cloud stack, VMware, vCloud director, etc. Which course is best to me in fees? Again, fees depend on the course or provider. Uh, what would be a good course? I think it depends. I can't really say if you if you say an ITIL expert, or if you want to if you're interested in the safe service management and if that is important in your role, uh, I would go for the professional cloud service manager course. If you um, are more let's say focused on say the architecting solutions then obviously the cloud solution architect would be the better fit. Hope that answered your question. How is the cloud adoption across the world? What would I like to know is if anyone in India gets certified in CCC, will they be able to find corresponding expert jobs in India or they may have to relocate overseas? Um, that's a, yeah, an interesting question and the reason why it's interesting is that um, yeah, cloud is really um, not adopted at the same rate depending on where you go. Uh, in the US it's obviously um, a hot topic and people are actually adopting and using cloud computing. In Europe it's, um, yeah, they're lagging. I think it, it takes a lot more time and effort to to get people to understand the benefits of cloud computing. So here in Europe where I'm based I think uh, we're somewhat lagging behind. If you look at Japan, Japan is, is very um, let's say innovative uh, with cloud computing, they're, they're really embracing this technology because they see this as an opportunity for them to um, get to get ahead and to build, let's say, a strong economy, I believe, and to build more services and that can be an impulse for them. Um, so there I really see them adopting it. I think India also shows potential where uh, a, a lot of the providers are, let's say, sourcing towards India, so I don't think you will have to relocate overseas. I think there's a lot of jobs that are actually being created in India. So uh, if you yeah, become a cloud expert, I think there's a lot you can do, um, let's say, within within your own country. I hope that somewhat answers your question. I do, and I yeah. if you have good, interesting uh, things to share, please don't hesitate to contact me because I think it's very interesting that, um, that cloud really doesn't, is not adopted at the same rate um, depending on where you are in the world. I'm currently doing a certification on cloud and the vendors working is um, VMvisor, so is that enough or do you recommend me 
uh, doing more vendors. Again, I mean, I think it's uh, it's very difficult to answer these somewhat personal questions. Um, again, what I would say, and again, to have a look at say your current skills and try to figure out, you know, what are my strengths and what are my weaknesses, and um, and where do I want to go myself, and and what kind of courses could supplement the things that I lack. So. Um, for example, with um, the course I personally recently took, the problem management course, um, was very interesting because yeah, I like solving problems, and I think, you know, I, I know that um, taking a course that actually provides, let's say, a framework for me to to better to better do problem management has helped me. So that's an area that I've improved in, which because I like it and I'm good at it, and um, and the course helped helped doing it, improving it even more. So uh, again, just look at your strengths and weaknesses and understand where you want to go with your career and um, and pick out the, the best certification that you think could take you there. We have a couple more minutes left I think Sri Lagna so um, do you want me to continue answering some questions or would you like me to end the webinar? Uh, you could take up two more questions uh, Korean and uh, okay. then I would wrap up the session. Okay great. Then I have a question here. For existing businesses, what are the usual sectors that they are comfortable in exposing to cloud computing? Uh, sectors, I, I can imagine you mean like what do you kind of like use from cloud computing? Um, what I see is that usually the, the, the non-business critical applications are, are moved to cloud computing. So whether it's, let's say, uh, somebody mentioned Salesforce certification, the um, uh, using Salesforce as a CRM tool is very easy because you don't need to install anything. It's uh, it has proven itself to be successful for organizations, so it's very easy to push that into the cloud. The same goes for email. You usually see email going to the cloud, whether that's um, let's say Office 365 with their uh, with their email as well as with their um, like desktop um, uh, apps. The same goes for uh, for Google. So they have a let's say a Gmail. Um, solution for for doing mail, so you don't have to do that yourself anymore. So usually you see that the non-business critical, um, say, um, solutions going towards cloud computing. I think it's a great idea because that way you can test it out, see if it works before, let's say, going it, going all in. So I think it's, uh, usually you see the, the non-business critical things going into the cloud first. And. Another question which I gladly answer, I am an IT security profile, could you distinguish the CCSK versus the CCC Cloud Security and Governance course? Um, so that will be the final question that I will answer then um, during this webinar. I think the CCSK, and I took that um, the training myself actually, um, what I liked about it, the CCSK is that it was somewhat at a, uh, I wouldn't say foundational, but still at a, say, foundation slash um, it's an intermediate level, so I could understand most of it as a cloud um, as a cloud practitioner. Although I'm not a security expert, so I thought it was relevant for me because it was at the right level. But I can, but the I think the difference between CCSK and security course from the CCC is that the the, the latter one, the CCS, uh, the, um, the course from the CCC, it uh, gets a bit complicated with all the C's, but um, the Cloud Credential Council course, I think it's it's much more at a professional level. So uh, I think the CCSK could actually be a great entry uh, before taking the cloud security course from the from the CCC. So um, first take CC, CCSK. Uh, if you've reached that certificate, then I would enroll into uh, the security course from the Cloud Credential Council. Obviously, depending on your expert level. So if you already know a lot about security, then maybe the CCSK uh, is to say that to basic level for you and you are looking more at a professional level course. So hope that answered your question, uh, Pankaj. With that, uh, Sri Lakna, I think we've come to the end of the webinar. So um, I will hand it over to you and then you can close this webinar for today. Thank you so much, uh, Korean. Um, great presentation and uh, really, uh, you know, interesting. Some of the questions are really interesting. And trust me, we have a lot of other questions which still remain unanswered, but not to worry, uh, they can email the questions directly to you or they can email it to us and uh, we'll be more than happy to share the questions with you and uh, you can take them offline. Okay, great. 
and, and, and uh, I would also personally like to thank everybody here on uh, on the call for uh, taking the time out of your day to uh, yeah to listen and to learn a little bit more about uh, let's say the, the value of certifications and, and what's available. Thank you for taking time out, uh, Koryan. Uh, though there's a time difference and everything, keeping in mind. Uh, we really would like to thank you for giving this presentation today and look forward to having such more uh, sessions in near future. Uh, for all the attendees today, uh, please log in to techgeek.com tomorrow afternoon for the, for the recorded version of today's webinar. And uh, feel free to send us your feedback, questions, concerns, any, any question that you might have for uh, Korean uh, in regards to today's session or any other feedback, please uh, feel free to email us. Uh, thank you so much once again for uh, your participation and thank you so much uh, Korean for the presentation today. Thank you. And thank, and thank you too for managing it today. Much appreciated. You're most welcome. Thank you. Have a great day Korean. Okay, you too.